There's excitement in the chase, this I know Yeah, I'm going for the ride And by myself I am alive And I saw Still I run towards the wind And let the challenge drop me Hey everyone, in. welcome to Arise Shine. This is John and Carla Capetto of Broadcast of Faith Heights Church. Got some great words for you today from heaven. We believe God's going to speak to you. We've been praying in the spirit. We believe we're going to interpret some things today, and it's going to be full of revelation. So stay tuned. Tell your friends about us. Carla, say hi. Good morning. Grab your cup of coffee or your tea yes. or whatever, and uh, just sit down, listen, pay attention. Uh, we're going to share some powerful things yes, we today. Are. Um, before I share what we're going to be talking about, nice watch there. Oh, yeah, well, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I noticed that you when like you that? sat down. Nice. Yeah. So. Uh, my wife gave that to me. She must be amazing. She's absolutely <laughs> groovy. <laughs> anyway, well, good morning. <laughs> so the last few weeks we've been talking about guarding our heart. And we're going to kind of continue along those lines, but we're going to come at it a little another angle. It's a huge subject. So it is, yeah. it is. We could talk about it. You, we could talk about every subject in the Bible But forever. it's so important, though, because <laughs> the power that's in our hearts a lot of times has a hard time coming out right, because there's right. things bothering our hearts. Yes. But when nothing's bothering your heart and you got a revelation of the blood of Jesus and you got a revelation of righteousness mm. and you decide to go ahead and live like God wants you to live, you are invincible. You talk about Superman and <laughs> uh, what do you call it? Um, Superheroes. Superheroes. I mean, when you're, nothing's bothering your heart as a child of God, oh. that faith of God, that love of God, that power of God, that authority of the yes. believer flows out of you like rivers of living water. And there's nothing that can stop a child of God whose heart's not bothering yeah, him. Yeah, that's right. So today we're going to talk about being right with God. Another way to say it is righteousness. Mm -hmm. Now, do you know we can say we are righteous? Now, when we say that, some people, their head kind of tilts and they say, you're saying you're righteous? What, you think you're perfect? No, righteousness is not being perfect. In all righteousness our behaviors, right. is being right with God. Uh -huh. And in 1 Corinthians, it says we're supposed to awake to righteousness. That means there's some things we need to wake up wake to. Wake up to it. We exactly. need to realize. We need to see. Exactly. We need to know about. So we need to wake up awake to righteousness yes we do so we're going to talk about righteousness which is i guess a simple way to say it is right with god we're going to talk about being right with god and that we have been made right with it's god so good carla we don't have to earn it we don't have that's to right. deserve it that's right we don't have to we work were up to made. it that's right it's not work up to righteousness it's wake, wake up, up to, to righteousness. righteousness huge revelation yeah, guys so. huge revelations because before you start talking about behavior you want to find out who you are in Christ because behavior yes. is the result of what you believe you really are. If yeah. you believe you're a dirty, no good, unworthy sinner, guess what? You're probably going to see that in your behavior. But yeah. if you believe you are who God says you are as a Christian, mm -hmm. now you're going to start living like you are instead of trying to be what you're not. Yep. 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 Quit trying to live to be something. Just live out of who you really are. Yeah. So many people are trying to work up to righteousness, but Scripture says in 1 Corinthians 15, 34, awake to righteousness. Wake up, church. You have been made the righteousness of God in Christ. Now live like it. Yeah. That's different than trying so hard to be. This is realizing what you are and living like you are instead of yes. trying to be what you're not. Yeah. So I know that's a lot of words there, but guys, you need to realize if you're a Christian, you have been mm -hmm. made not only righteous, the righteousness of God wow. in Christ. Second Corinthians 5, right? Wow. Jesus was made to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made, made the righteousness of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Think about this, guys. We were made righteous, and it's the righteousness of God that we've been made. Yeah. So think about this. You will never in one billion years from now be more righteous than you are right now. Wow. Righteousness is not a fruit. Righteousness is a gift. Now, there are fruits of righteousness, right. but righteousness in and of itself is something you were made when you were born again. It means you're right with God because of what Jesus did for you. It means you were placed in a position of cleanliness and blessing and holiness mm. because of what Jesus did. You are that now and you will be forever. That's really mm. powerful. 
we probably need to really slow down and we say do. that again, that <clears throat> we will never be more righteous than we are right now. On the inside. Wow. Right. So many people think we have to do better, do more. Well, we live we in have the world. to be perfect. We have to, you know, earn something or That's deserve right. something, but we will never be more righteous on the inside than we, we are We've right grown right up now. in a world, exactly. Mm. We've grown up in a world that says, if you want to be a better person, do better. Right, right. If you want more, you got to earn more. And nothing wrong with working hard, nothing wrong, but man, separate that from salvation and yes. redemption and the power of God and the blessings of God because as soon as you try to earn God's favor, you disqualify yourself. Right. You have to simply receive the gift of righteousness. And oh, Carla, don't you love that scripture? Romans 5, 17. We which have received the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness mm. shall live our lives victoriously in the here and now. Oh, that's really good. Notice yes. victorious living comes after realizing you're righteous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to realize why. Well, the devil knows if I can keep these born again, more than conqueror, world overcoming, children of God, ignorant of who they really are, they'll still walk around like a wimpy puppy instead of a roaring lion. Yes. But the righteous are as bold as a lion. Wow. And so he has got to keep people in a state of unworthiness, sense of lack of faith, so that they never use their God-given powers and overcome all the devil's mm -hmm. attacks. Mm -hmm. But what are we, Carla? We have been made the righteousness of God in Christ. Wow. I should read that scripture in 2 Corinthians 5. Mm -hmm. We all know the scripture, uh, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God, which he's talking about being made righteous. Mm -hmm. And then it says, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, at the very end of the chapter, verse 21. For he, God, has made Jesus to be sin for us, who knew no sin, he never sinned, he was made to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in mm. him. This is something that happens when you're born again. Paul yes. said, we now being justified by his grace. We now being justified. Oh, this is so important. When we get to heaven is not when we become righteous. Right. If you're not righteous before you go, you ain't going. Right. And the only way you can be righteous is if you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Yeah. And this is why people have to realize it's not about working hard. It's not about doing good deeds. It's not about visiting the elderly. It's not about being nice. It's about being born again. Mm, yes. If you yes, want yes. to go to heaven, because that's the only way you can go is if you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Yeah. And you've been made righteous before you leave this life. Yeah, yeah. So I think everybody should just take just take a second right now and just say, I am right with God. I, I am, am right. right with God. Yes, I am righteous. Wow. Whether my head gets that or not, yeah. I am right with God. Yeah. Whether my feelings line up or not, I am, am right, right with right God with by God. what he did and my acceptance yeah. of what he's done. You know, we need to get in mm. the habit of learning to receive what we don't deserve. Yes. We need yes. to get in the habit of learning to receive what we don't deserve. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. see, there's habits in our life that are keeping people from receiving from the Lord. It says, whole earn it, got to do better. It's all about performance. It's all about achievement. It's all about this. It's all about, no, it's all about faith in Jesus. Yeah. It's all about faith in God and receiving. Now, you talk about springing into a life of good works. Right. Wow. When you realize you're the righteousness of God in Christ and how much he's done for you and paid the price so that could be, you will spring in the good works like never before. Yeah. Well, it says in first corinthians awake to righteousness and sin not it's like when you really wake mm. up to that fact you're not going to want to sin you're not going to want to do right. anything wrong because you're going to realize how precious that gift of righteousness is for us so and that good I'm right with god i, mm. I don't want to sin right it's not don't sin and then you'll be righteous it's you're righteous and now you don't want to sin you should say that 10 times yeah <laughs> yeah it's don't sin and you'll be righteous. Right. It's realize you're righteous and you won't want, want to, to sin. But when we say mm. realize, this has to become real to you. Yes. Not just something your brain goes, okay, I got it. Something that goes, that's powerful in your heart. Yeah. That's why you have to meditate on this because you did not grow up in a world that's conducive with what we're teaching right now.
Yeah. You grew up in a world that says you're not righteous. You're a victim. If something comes your way, it may be bigger than you. You may be gone. You may die young. You may get this cancer. You may do this. It's all this stuff. It's like all this victim mentality, condemnation, mm-hmm. guilt. I might deserve it because I know I'm not good junk. Right. And you have to meditate on these scriptures long enough about I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I have received the gift of righteousness. I'm going to reign in life. Jesus became sin that I might become righteous. I am free. Get a revelation of that and you'll start living your life more victoriously because yeah. that's how it happens. Yeah. That's why daily declarations over our, mm. our life is so important. I have like wow. two, three, four pages of daily, I, I've talked about it before, but of daily declarations, daily confessions that I yep. say over myself. Mm. Because every day we have to remind ourselves who we are. Yes, we do. I am the righteousness yep. of God in Christ. You know, I can do all things through Christ. I mean, just all these mm-hmm. daily, I'm a saint, I'm the elect of God. We have to say these things over ourselves. too. Because the world out there is going to come and try to convince us that we are not those things that the Bible says we are. <laughs> Something's constantly going into us. Yeah. Yes. It's not like the world takes a break. Right. Not Something's at all. constantly going into us. Mm-hmm. So if we don't speak the scriptures over our life, that doesn't mean nothing's happening. It means something else is going in us. So we have yep. to quote scriptures daily to mm-hmm. remind ourselves mm-hmm. we're not what our flesh says we are. We're not what the world says we are. We're not what our parents said we were if they said wrong things. We're That's not what right. our school teachers are, the bullies in school. We're not what they said we are. We're what God says we yes. are. We are the offspring of God, made in the image and likeness of mm-hmm. God. And if you're a born again Christian, you have been made the righteousness of God in Christ. You have been yes. justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And you have power and you can be as bold as a lion. Mm. You can knock disease out of your body. You can pray for the sick with boldness just like Jesus did because you are no less righteous than Jesus. Wow. If you're born again. That's right. If you're born again. He was that way because that's who he is. We are that way because he made us that way. Mm. And what a gift, the gift yes. of right. Think about the gift of righteousness. What does that mean? It means it's not a fruit. Right. It's not about growing in righteousness. Mm. Righteousness is not a fruit of the spirit. It's a gift of God that recreated the human spirit that you are forever. Mm -hmm. And this is where sometimes I think people get a little confused because we go to 1 John 1, 9. Yes. And there's actually some people, I guess, that, I mean, I don't know if I heard them with my own ears, but they're trying to say that 1 John is not written to Christians, but that's just not true. John wouldn't say my little children to non-believers, spiritually speaking. And um, so, Carla, what about this? The Bible says... To believers, if we confess our sins, because how many know as a believer, you're still works in progress yes, on the outside. We yes, we right? are. Our flesh is catching <laughs> up with our hearts, right? Yeah. Hopefully yep. quickly. Yep. But if we confess our sins, if we acknowledge, Lord, I blew it. We're not playing games. We're not hiding. Right. We're not being dishonest. I blew it. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Now listen, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Notice what it didn't say. It didn't say he will make us righteous again. You don't need to be righteous again. You're you're righteous in Christ. You may have dirt of the world on you, but that doesn't mean you're a dirty person. If I get dirt on me physically and I go take a shower, I'm not going, I'm such a dirty person. I just take a shower, get cleaned up and go on my way (laughs) smelling good, you know? (laughs) I mean, come on. I mean, if you're a believer, Dirt of the world is going to get on you. Mm -hmm. Dirt of the flesh is going to try to get on you. Well, you don't need to be made righteous again because he didn't say if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to make us righteous again. He said he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse Cleanse us us. from all unrighteousness. So sometimes you just need a good Holy Ghost shower, probably more than some people (laughs) realize because they're getting a little stinky with the world. Oh, yeah, that's right. You can kind of smell the world on them. It's like, do you really watch those things? Do you really (laughs) drink that much? Do you really do that kind of stuff? Really? It's almost like they start to get stinky. Mm -hmm. You need to take a shower. You need to acknowledge some things and say, and quit saying, well, that's okay because I'm growing up and I can handle it. How about we just stay soft and tender, Mm -hmm. which is what this whole teaching is about, nothing bothering. Yep. And let's just stay ready for great things, higher levels resisting disease if it tries to come around yes. claiming victory rebuking bondage breaking this breaking that yeah i like the boldness part mm. the righteous are as bold as a lion That's what solomon said oh yeah yeah the first part of that verse says the wicked flee 
when no one's pursuing. They're just like scared of everything, scaredy mm-hmm. cats. Why? Because their conscience is bothering them. Right, right. But what does it say that the last yeah. part? The right. The righteous are as bold as a lion. <laughs> well, when you know you're right with God, you can do anything. <laughs> That's right. You have the confidence you need to cast out the That's devil. That's right. You have the confidence you need to lay hands on the sick. Exactly. You have the confidence you need to believe God for some great and mighty things. That's so good. Yeah. When you know you're right with God, you can do anything. Maybe there should be a little study on lions. Mm. I mean, some of the coolest things about lions is they're kind of slow moving, and but when they roar, the ground shakes. Yeah. It's like everybody in the field goes, what was that? The lion is waking up and he's hungry. Yeah. Yeah. We were just talking with someone the other day who had been in Africa. And they heard a lion roar that yeah. they said was miles away. Yeah. Yeah. But it scared them and they ran back to the house. <laughs> <That's because right. laughs> a lion's roar can be heard for miles. And That's you'll right. think it's close. But it could be miles away. That's right. And so Solomon, we are bold, as Solomon bold as a lion. said that the righteous are as bold as a lion. I think we ought to just roar right now. Just try it. <laughs> Come on, try it. <laughs> How many people do you think did that in their living room? I hope everybody did. You know, <laughs> Humble yourself in the Lord. Become a little child. Kingdom of heaven's yours, right? Our two-year-old grandson would roar. <laughs> That's right. Maybe our grandson right here would roar. <laughs> Hunter's behind the scenes. Can we get a roar? <laughs> So, do you guys, do you see what's going on here? The Lord's trying to lift you out of feelings of unworthiness because feelings of unworthiness go hand in hand with a sense of lack of faith. Mm-hmm. A sense of unworthiness goes hand in hand with a sense of lack of faith. And the devil knows if he can convince mm-hmm. people that they're unworthy when they're not, by the blood of Jesus, you're worthy. But yeah. if he can convince people they're unworthy, mm. they will live an unworthy, defeated life when all along they could have entered into the promised land. Yes. The children of Israel, most of them saw themselves as grasshoppers, but that was a lie. Mm-hmm. But believing that lie led them to their destiny. Right. The truth was they were Jericho conquerors. Yes. But you got to see yourself as a Jericho. It's not enough to be righteous. You got to know you're righteous. Yes. It's not enough to be a Jericho conqueror. You got to know you're a Jericho conqueror. I ain't yes. no grasshopper. Mm. I ain't no grasshopper. Man, if the, if the, if the children of Israel would have really known what was going on there, Rahab said to the spies, um, I don't know if you guys realize this or not, but everybody in Jericho is afraid of you. <laughs> they know the Lord's with you. Yeah. They know yeah. you're going to win this yeah. battle. But the, most of the Israelites were deceived into thinking they were the grasshoppers. Yeah. But even in reality, Jericho was afraid of them. Yeah. So they believed the lie of the devil, believed they were grasshoppers, talked like grasshoppers, acted like grasshoppers, and died like grasshoppers in the wilderness, all because they believed a lie. Mm. Something about themselves that was not true. Yep. Yep. And they perished because of how they saw themselves. Even though they were victorious, they didn't die as victorious Christians or believers or Israel. They they died as grasshoppers. Mm -hmm. Very, Very important to not only be what God says you are, very important to know what he says you are mm-hmm. so you can actually start saying it and believing it. Mm-hmm. John Osteen's, uh, and now Joel Osteen, what they open up their services with. Yes, I, I am like who the Bible that. says I am. Yes. And I can do what the Bible says I That's can do. That's so good. We need to see that over our, say that over our lives Absolutely. every day. I am what God says I am, and I can do what God says I can do. Absolutely. You know, Carla, I think one of the things, one of the problems in Christianity and I don't like to point out all the problems, but one thing that would help us as Christians is we need to realize the power of gradual uh, changes. Mm. Um, A lot of people say, well, I I tried confessing the word over my life. I tried speaking, you know, I am who the Bible says I am. I I am righteous. I am more than a conqueror. I tried that for a couple of weeks. Friend, it it takes more than a couple of weeks to build a house. It may take more than a couple of weeks to build your life. That's right. But you need to know every time you speak the word of God in this area, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. You are building something. Yes. We're not talking about magic here. We're not talking about poof, hocus pocus. We're talking about building something very powerful and supernatural in your life by continually Mm. saying, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. First hundred times your mind may be going, what? I don't get what you're saying at all, mouth. I don't understand, <laughs> mouth, what you're saying at all. That's okay. Keep listening because yes. after a while, it's going to dawn on you. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. What am I doing playing in the mud? 
Yeah. Yield into these stupid fleshly things. Mm. I mean, let's face it. If you had a white dress on and I had a, a beautiful white tux on and we we're going to a powerful royal banquet, we'd stay out of the mud. Yes. Why? Because we see ourselves as royal. Yeah. We see ourselves as royalty. Well, if you see yourselves as royalty, it's not hard to stay out of the mud. It's ooh. Yes. Oh, that's right. Oh, what did the Bible say? Mm. It's an abomination for kings to commit wickedness. Realize mm. you're a king and it'll be an abomination to you too. That's right. But what if you realize you're a unworthy sinner, kind of weak and not real strong and I do bad things and I know I've got problems and you can keep doing that stuff. That's what right. if you decide, you know what? He has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign forever. That's right. What if you believe that scripture in Revelation? Mm -hmm. Well, number one, you walk around the mud puddles. That's right. Things you used to be tempted with, you walk around. Why? Because you ain't a dirty person no more. You're a king. You have white vestures on. You're powerful. You've, you're strong. You've yes. been made righteous. And now you just want to live the way you believe you are. Mm, that's so good. This is revelation coming to us. We're so thankful for this yes, word because we yes, heard this years yes. ago, but we still get revelation on it today as we oh, talk yeah. about it. That's because the word is alive. It's living. It's alive and living yes. and it never gets old. No. You know, Carla, um, two things on my mind right now. Um, remind me to say something before we close about when your mom was struggling with a disease because okay. the Lord woke me up as a pastor to help her. But before that, you know, we talked about confessing the word every day. Mm -hmm. Here's a revelation that's really important. You need to not underestimate the gradual building of something good in your life. Yes. And you need to not underestimate the gradual moving of a mountain. Mm. Some things we chip away at. You know, we're not quite as developed as the Lord Jesus where we speak and the tree dies 24 hours later. Right. But every time you speak the word of God with some faith in it, you're chipping away and chunking away and carving away at something. And the mountain may not move in three weeks, but keep speaking, keep chipping, keep chopping, keep carving, because don't underestimate the gradual yeah. moving of a mountain. Just because it wasn't bing, gone doesn't mean it's not leaving, That's doesn't mean right. it's not eroding, doesn't mean it's about to crumble into the sea. That's right. It's happening. You keep speaking the word, build good things in your life, keep speaking against problems, deteriorate those things. Don't underestimate the gradual moving a mountain by confessing the word every day of your life. Mm -hmm. It's happening. Yes. So think about your mom. When she was uh, diagnosed with some problems, um, as a pastor, I woke up at like three in the morning. I remember we were in our house on Tamaran, and mm -hmm. I, I woke up and I said, Lord, what can I do to help our people, mom and, and other people? And, and you know what he led me to? He said, if you really want to help people get healed and get delivered, go get that book by E.W. Kenyon, Two Kinds of Righteousness, and read it. And I'm thinking, but I want healing for our people. He goes, exactly. Mm. When they realize they're righteous, they'll slap disease in the face. When they realize they're righteous, they'll come up out of things. When they realize they're yes. righteous, their faith will be strong. And I remember preaching on that. I remember good results took place on that. Uh, things happened. Your mom was getting better. And it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely wonderful. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes I think we need to stick with things a little longer, too. But yeah. righteousness is a healing message. Yes, it is. Because of what it does for your faith. Righteousness is a healing message. It's a faith message. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just powerful. Yep. It wow. is. What could a man or a woman mm. do, Carla, who had zero condemnation in their heart and mind? Right. What could a man or a woman do uh. who had zero condemnation in their heart mm. before God, before man? I don't think we've yet seen the fullness of what God can do right. through a man or a woman who has oh. no condemnation. That's right. Nothing bothering mm. their heart. I mean, isn't that one of the reasons mm. Jesus mm. was so successful and so powerful in his ministry? He had nothing bothering his heart. Yeah. When he came across demon forces, he wasn't like, oh, what should I do? I hope I'm righteous enough to deal with this. He just said, shut up and come out. Mm -hmm. You can't do that if you're bothered by and something. And because he knew who he was, he knew that. And he constantly confessed the, it. The, the devil saw that in him. Yep. Just like when they, um, when, uh, who was it, the seven sons of Sceva? Mm -hmm. they when they were going to try to cast mm -hmm. out the devil. And he's like, well, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? Exactly. It's like somehow the demons knew that those, pe those guys didn't have that. They didn't know who they, they were. They didn't know who they were. And they probably weren't even born again, so how could probably they not. turn to anything? Right. 
Right? Yeah, so it's like, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? Now, if they were born again Christians, I'll tell you who I am. That's right. I'm a child of God with all the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. I can cast out devils in his name. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I don't have to be perfect to do this. Shut up and, and come out. out. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Glory to God. Yeah. Righteousness. And that's how we need to be. We need to be that bold. Exactly, mm. exactly. Yeah. This is like a whole seminar here, but the Lord's given us some mm -hmm. powerful revelation. Even these last few minutes, He's given us yeah. powerful revelation that if you will meditate on this and utilize this, myself included, you'll mm -hmm. see greater victory in your life. Yes. You'll see greater victory because one yes. of the number one things that stops people from appropriating victory is a sense of unworthiness mm. and a sense of lack of faith. They're just not doing much about the problem mm. when they could. Oh, would you pray for me? Oh, would you? Nothing wrong with it being praying. Don't get me wrong, but you pray and help me I, just, I, could, I need to get on a prayer chain and I need this and I need that a lot of times that's simply because people have not yet got rid of condemnation they've not yet believed in the power of the blood they've not yet realized what mm -hmm, righteousness mm -hmm. is and they've not yet stopped living like they know they shouldn't live exactly you just take care of those simple things boom mm -hmm. you know things mm -hmm. will get better now so we're going to talk about that in the next session next week we're going to talk a little bit about what I just mentioned there about there's two reasons people are having a hard time living in victory one is because they don't have a revelation that they're righteous and it's producing a sense of unworthiness and lack of faith in their life. Mm -hmm. Number two is they're living in certain ways that they know they shouldn't be living. And that just keeps a lingering sense of golly, I guess I'm just not good. Yeah. Friend, you just yeah. live the way you know you're supposed to live. Yeah. Realize you're the righteousness of God in Christ and just start kicking disease out of your life. That's right. In Jesus' name. Yes. Let's pray, huh? Amen. Let us pray for our audience. Father, we're asking in the name of Jesus mm -hmm. that everyone that's watching right now, that these words would sink down into their ears, yes. that it wouldn't go in one ear and out the other. Yes. Help them to retain what they've heard. Yes. You said happy is everyone that retains wisdom. Help them to retain what they've heard today, appropriate it in their life, and I prophesy over every listener right now in the name of Jesus, you are gonna live your life victoriously yes. because you are a recipient of the abundance of grace and the gift of righteous, righteousness by your faith in Jesus. You are blessed. Well, thanks everybody for watching Arise Time. We'll see you again next Monday right here.